Welcome to this tutorial on structural analysis in GHS. Tutorial number 710 introduces longitudinal strength. So today we're going to cover the beginnings of structural analysis, specifically longitudinal strength. And really that's going to focus on the ls command in GHS. So first we're going to do the setup for longitudinal strength and then we're going to show how you actually do the analysis using the ls command. But first a disclaimer this presentation is for instruction purposes only. It is not to be used in engineering for construction and I'm not a representative of creative systems. This is unofficial training only. Uh, for the official training you can contact creative, syst creative systems at the information on the bottom of your screen. I highly recommend the official training. It's quite informative. Okay, so structural analysis in GHS. Uh, the first thing I really want to get through is that GHS does not do a full structural analysis. Uh, when GHS does structural analysis, what we are talking about is longitudinal strength only. So that, in GHS, that assumes hull girder bending theory. So we're looking at global structural analysis, not individual details. This is really only good for preliminary structural analysis. Uh, concept design level, or possibly checking your cargo loading distribution on your vessel, uh, but it's quasi-static only, so you don't get any information about sea keeping response, none of the dynamic momentum problems, uh, you don't have to worry about hull flexure or any of that, none of that gets covered in GHS longitudinal strength. So this is not the complete structural design, it's uh, the beginning of it. The first thing we need to know about longitudinal strength in GHS is that we have to start thinking about weights in a different way. When we're talking about longitudinal strength, suddenly it's not enough to know the, where the weight is. Suddenly the distribution of that weight is also a very important. Um, a normal weight that you enter in GHS is entered as a point weight. Uh, that is to say that GHS thinks that all of that weight happens right at the center of gravity. Now, that's the default behavior. You can also do in GHS what is called a distributed weight. Now, the way that works is kind of different, and you have to keep this in mind. So, you know, a normal weight in GHS, you just tell it what the total weight is. A distributed weight, though, you tell it the um, rate by which weight changes per uh, distance at different locations. And from that, GHS calculates the total weight. So if you look at this uh, trapezoid down here, this is how GHS thinks of a distributed weight. What you're doing is telling it these numbers here at the corners. You're telling it, it that the weight is at 10 metric tons per meter right here and at 5 metric tons per meter down here. You can see that's how you would actually enter it in GHS. 10 at 0, 5 at 20. So here's that distance of 20 apart. So notice this 10 and this 5. These aren't weights. These are longitudinal weight rates. Okay, so that's essentially what this distance is right here. That vertical part, it's a weight rate. And GHS takes that information and essentially integrates this area to get that 150 metric tons total weight. But you're not giving it the total weight. This is not something that you tell it explicitly. GHS automatically calculates it from the rate information that you give it. So keep that in mind. It's when we talk structural analysis, you have to be thinking in terms of distributed weights. Okay, so how do you enter the distributed weight command? Uh, so the distributed weight command is for, again, entering your light ship weight, or if you just wanted to describe all of the weight on the ship as one item. And you still use the GHS command weight, but we're going to modify the input format a little bit. So normal weight, you entered uh, a weight, comma, an LCG. Now what we do is we give it pairs of a weight rate, the at symbol, and a location. And you keep doing that. Weight rate at location, weight rate at location. 
uh, and you keep going for however many entries you want to make, and then you finish it off with the TCG and the VCG of that weight. So those two are still entered on their own, uh, but the longitudinal information now is entered as rate at location, and GHS will automatically calculate the LCG. Now, you notice I said you can keep going as long as you want, and if you're doing something like your light ship weight distribution, this could be quite a few weight pairs. So, uh, you might actually have to go to multiple lines. Now, it's useful to know how to do that in GHS. Uh, the way you wrap your command to multiple lines in GHS is you do what I've done here, is you actually uh, make sure that the last character on your line is a comma, and then just start on the next line. And when you finish with a comma as your last character, GHS knows to just wrap to the next line. Okay, now there's another command also that we use for adding weights. Like I said, normally the weight command is used to define the longitudinal, uh, the light ship weight of your ship, but there are usually uh, fixed items as well, say like a container on deck um, or some very large cargo that's distributed, say, across a quarter of your ship. That you would want to do the add command to add it as its own separate dead weight. And just how we modified the weight command to make a distributed weight, you add a, you modify the add command the same way. So we're still adding in a a, nine, a name for our item, but now instead of a a weight and an LCG, we're doing rate and location pairs. And again, finish it off with the TCG and the VCG. So, pretty much the same modification. Again, GHS will automatically calculate your LCG. Um, now, you can also have other distributed items in GHS. So, tanks, uh, any tanks that you have to find in GHS, uh, if you load those, you know, if you put liquid in your tanks, then don't worry, GHS automatically counts those as distributed weights. So in that case, the weight is distributed over the uh, distance of your tank. And GHS actually accounts for the trim of that tank in its distribution. Now, buoyancy is a distributed weight as well. So that's why you have these station definitions, is GHS actually knows how much buoyancy is added at each one of your sections. And it is the buoyancy at your current draft and trim. So this is another thing, is when you're doing longitudinal strength analysis, usually you have to do it for several different loading conditions because the draft and trim matter since they affect your buoyancy. And notice how I said trim matters. Well, how does the trim modify things? Uh, GHS will take your trim angle and all of your weights get reduced by the cosine of that trim angle and all of the buoyancy gets reduced by the cosine of that trim angle. So it's, it's basically accounting for the fact that gravity is no longer pointing straight down if your vessel has a straight tri has a trim on it. Okay, so let's say you've gone through, you've set everything up. You know, you've done all of these distrib distributed weights, you've set up a loading condition with your tanks. Now you actually want to do the longitudinal strength analysis. To do that, you need the longitudinal strength command. Uh, this isn't part of the most basic GHS, this requires the LS module, so make sure you have that in your license options. Uh, but once you have that, and once you've set up everything, this is actually a very simple command. Now, the reason it's simple is because the command itself is simple, uh, but you have to do several things to set it up beforehand, and that's what all of those distributed weights were about. Once you've got that set up, you just type LS. That's the command in GHS, LS, for longitudinal strength. Now, it does require that you need to be in weight and trim equilibrium already, uh, but once that's already done, you type LS and GHS, first thing it does is it builds the load curve, which is the weight minus the buoyancy at each one of your section locations. And there are several different options for details of information to pull out from the LS command. So, Basic LS has several modifiers that we can add on, and I'll talk a little bit about some of those now, 
and then I'll talk more about them in the next tutorial. But some of those options, you, know, you can specify frame locations, uh, you can specify strength limits, this is usually something that comes from your regulations. Uh, you can specify the section modulus of your hull. Uh, you can even use that to get the information about deflection of your hull. So lots of information that you can get out from that simple little ls command. The one I want to talk about today is frame locations. So what that is is uh, specific locations. You know, if you just do a straight ls command, GHS is going to report the longitudinal strength information, uh, that is bending moment and shear force, at the stations on your hull. Excuse me, not stations, but the sections. You know, the, the parts that are defined sections in your geometry file. Well, the problem is those sections might not actually correspond to any structurally significant location on your hull. So you might actually want to tell GHS that you actually want this to be reported at specific positions along your hull. Uh, those would be frame locations. And you can do that for GHS. You can tell it a list of specific locations to report longitudinal strength information out. Uh, the way you do that is you put these locations in a separate file. This uh, separate text file, it has to be in the same directory as your geometry file. And the format of this file, it's just a straight text file. And the only thing you put in this file is this paired information here. So you give a location description, comma, and the position. And a couple important things there. Location description, that's going to be a name for your location. Anything you want, but you only have 12 characters to work with. And the uh, x1, that location, be very careful here, that's the location in feet. So when you're typing in this, no matter what your units are that you work with in normal GHS, this frame file has to be positioned in feet. So here would be an example of a frame file. You know, we've got frame 10, comma, negative 40, frame 20, comma, 0, frame 30, comma, 40. And that's the only thing you will find in that text file. No comments, nothing else. Now, how do you use that file? Well, first off, you can't just name this file anything you want. Uh, GHS, the way it finds this file is by having fixed format or a, a fixed format. It has to have an exact file name. So, whatever your geometry file is named, you know, if your geometry file is called myship.gf, your frame file needs to have the same name. If it's myship.gf, the frame file needs to be myship.fra, and that extension is important. So it's the .fra extension, and the same name as your geometry file. And the reason for all that is because once you want to use these frame files, uh, the way you do it in GHS is on the ls command, you just add the option frame. That's it. And that's why all the naming had to be so specific. It's because there's no way for you to tell GHS the name of the frame file. Uh, you have to just name it ahead of time to what GHS is expecting. Okay, so you've learned a lot about longitudinal strength. Let's put it to practice. Homework number 711. I would like you to run a longitudinal strength exercise on the example barge that's provided in that homework. And remember, longitudinal strength, the very first step you have to do is set up all the weights. So, first off, your light ship distribution. You're going to enter light ship using the weight command. And here's your light ship distribution. 5 metric tons at 0, 20 at 10, 20 at 90, 5 metric tons at 100, and a TCG and a VCG. So, there's that one. It's a very, very simplified light ship distribution. And then we've got two fixed weights that I want you to put in. One of them is a distributed weight, and I've given you this information there for it. Uh, notice all distributed weights, you need to have at least two pairs here of weight rates. And then the other thing I want you to add in, add in is this point weight. So you can actually mix and match with longitudinal strength. 
You can still use point weights. Uh, GHS will allow it. But when you run the longitudinal strength, you're going to see a big spike there. And that's why I actually put the point weight in, is I want you to see what those look like so that you can understand uh, the sort of the penalty it has on your longitudinal strength assessment so that you can make that decision about whether or not it's worth the effort to convert point weights to distributed weights. Now, as to the rest of the information, um, I want you to give this barge a draft 4 meters and level trim and load all of your ballast tanks to equalize. Uh, so just load all the ballast tanks that start with bal uh, and have GHS automatically load them to equalize weight and equalize trim. Uh, you should remember how to do that from the homework tutorials on basic hydrostatics. If not, go ahead and take a look at those tutorials again. Okay, so you've done all of that. You've set up your weights. You've run longitudinal strength. Now, come back and do it again, but this time with frame locations. So, take a look at the general arrangement drawing. I included it in the homework. And what I would like you to do is report out the locations at every 10 frames. So frame 0, frame 10, frame 20. And you'll see that they're marked on the barge all the way up to frame 200. Remember, this barge is in units of meters. And GHS frames have to be entered in units of feet. So keep that in mind. OK. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this informative and educational. Uh, you can find the homework files along with solutions and other tutorials at dmsonline.us. Thanks very much. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. Hey, did you know that there is a magic button down below? Click the like button or even the subscribe button and I will make more videos for you.